one. Okay, so this is the first time we do a part three. I think I'm going to have to buy Zoom Pro. So if there's anyone that wants to sponsor me and pay for that, please let me know. I'm actually, can't believe I'm doing this, but help in a sense. But don't worry. It's okay, I'm just kidding. I'll just use Skype. <laughs> Fuck you, Zoom. Uh, yeah, so but we were taking it back to where you guys said, like, it's not only about opening the gyms, but bringing everything like the aamq is going to be big like when i mean it's not going to be big like and i'm quoting <sighs> the controversial former president donald trump it's going to be big really yeah. big we we want to have a big impact whether we grow into a big organization or not it's not really something i think about and probably chris either uh what we want is, is is to have a big impact and turn our industry outside of our little office walls into a big thing and that includes bringing every single unrepresented, uh, unrepresented uh, discipline up to the highest standards we can get them. And some of the things we've looked at in the future is uh, we've already started planning is to help gym owners run their businesses uh, for those who need the help. Not everybody needs our help, but, they, but they're, 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 there's quite a few that do uh, or that would accept our help. And uh, so better business practice, uh, better safety and security in your gyms. This also goes for events and things like that. Uh, we want to introduce a, a sort of a universal kickboxing protocol and ultimately expand that to maybe all the disciplines that, that don't have it or gyms that don't have access to that type of stuff. Uh, you know, it's really big brother taking care of everybody and, and we want to see everybody grow and flourish and be the best possible versions of what they are within the next, you know, three to five years and hopefully keep that going for a long time as well as, you know, getting these gyms open and keeping them open. So yeah, we have, we have a lot of goals, you know, it's not, it's not just one, one thing. It's, it's, it's many short-term goals, uh, many immediate goals, many, many long-term goals. And it's all about the betterment of our community and uh, keep in mind, none of us get paid to do this. So this is all pro bono volunteer work and we're all really people with big hearts and that have visions of what our province could be you know my, myself personally i think quebec could be equal to bangkok or uh, you know big fight capitals like bangkok or even what dubai is becoming uh los angeles sorry las vegas and, and places like this you know like quebec could ha has the potential to be that big in in, in, in the combat sports world and in martial arts world and uh i think we're going to be uh we're going to be getting it there there's a good foundation to build that upon that's already in Quebec. I mean, you've got legends in, in multiple sports, you know. Um, speaking of PKA, you know, uh, growing up, uh, you know, one of my, my uh, not one of my, my absolute favorite kickboxer of all time uh, growing up was Jean-Yves The Iceman. Uh, Original huh? Iceman, not the, Chuck the Liddell. Ice man. Yeah, the Iceman. Uh, his, uh, his, his, his lead team one, two follow-up had so many knockouts. I mean, it's just, it was insane. Um, he's just, you know, and he fought all the way up, you know, held his championship and only had a couple of losses and he fought, uh, Rick the Jet Rufus at 41, 42 years old. Rick was 24 or 25 at the time. He fought him twice, eh? Didn't he fight him uh, twice, or is that just my, I don't know. I think he just fought him the one time. Yeah. Uh, cause, cause you know, 90% of, uh, of Dyson's fights were, you know, before Rick was even uh, pro, you know. <laughs> so you've got John Aistero, you've got Arturo Gotti, and then of course, you know, the name that everyone knows, which is, you know, George St. Pierre. These are all, these are all you know, people, are Quebecers. So we've got this huge foundation, you know, it's, uh, um, you know, there's, a, there's the, the, the boxing, um, there's the, the boxing um, um, articles that are put on by the Fight City, you know. You know, and I, I used to I was telling people when I was going to move here from California, I'm like, really, why, why, why Montreal? I said, it's a fight town. You know, I mean, Quebec is a fight province. You know, I mean, look at it. We, we the, the 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 population of Quebec compared to California, but yeah. we've got thousands of martial arts schools here. You know, this is a place where people like to train. So, like Justin was saying, I think really, you know, we could we could with. Ever, all of us, all the disciplines holding hands and the egos put aside, we can make this. We can make, we can make this a real martial arts mecca, and it would be uh, it would be beautiful for the sport. And one of the things that those that uh, that are already in you know, certain federations or are, as you said, you know, uh, Drew, you know, uh, the black belts behind certain disciplines you know, or martial arts uh, gym owners, we don't want to be pushing or shoving anyone any direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when it comes to the AMQ, you know, uh, our hands are to, to 
hold people up, help people up, or to give people what they need. That's what that's what the hands of the AMQ are for. You know, we, we absolutely want to be partners in this. Yeah. We don't want to we don't want to run this show. No. We don't want that. We don't want the work. We don't want the responsibility. <laughs> we really don't. We got no, the already, and as Justin said, we're volunteers. Uh, what we do want is we just want to be available to uh, to help any any martial arts academy that needs it, any federation that needs it, any run represented. Um, and uh, disciplines that want to form federations we've, we've gone through, we have gone and are still going through these different processes and are willing to share all the information and, and everything that we that we're learning along the way to help everyone get better absolutely it's absolutely. very yeah. it's very cool what you guys are doing like honestly like it's like i really think like regardless of language or creed or orientation like martial arts is the only thing that bridges people together yeah, yep. yeah, absolutely. Agreed, 100%. Yeah. yeah, we don't want to interfere or change anything that other federations are doing. In fact, we actually reached out to all the major federations, extended our hands for a handshake and said, listen, we're, we're here to work with you guys. We're not competing with anybody. We have a bunch of disciplines that we need to uh, take care of and they need our help. And uh, we're here to work with you guys. Call us anytime you want. We're here. We're here to be a part of what you're doing. Uh, if you need us and uh, we're not going anywhere. We plan to be around for a very long time to make the changes that we're setting out to change. We will, uh, we're all tough, resilient people that have been through a lot in life and uh, we're not easily um, scared away from challenges or, or anything like that. So we're here to stay. We're here to work with everybody, federations included, and we're here to make positive changes. And that's what we are about. It's awesome. I'm really happy to see, uh, as mentioned, you know, as, even though I said, I said, look, I said, I was like, I was giving, like, I was kind of like, uh, like, you know, calling out the Kyokushin community for like with their association. I'm not doing it because say you guys are going to boss them around. I want to make this clear. They're just going to have a voice, someone they can come to, like, you know, an agreement because they're sharing. We all share that common interest. We just want to reopen. Well, we, we can help train. them. We can help them get their own voice. You know, yeah. we, we don't want to we have to be a voice for somebody we definitely can be but ultimately we want to organize and situate everybody so that they can stand and be united on their own within you know our community and stuff and you know whether it's kyokushin or you know uh any other discipline whether it's capoeira krav maga sistema uh, aikido all these all these other things that uh may or may not be organized um we're there to help them do that we're there to help yeah, them you, ex precisely i mean you look at a wheel right say a bicycle wheel there's a hub, which everything is centered around, but the hub isn't what supports that wheel. It's all the spokes. Okay? And so we're not, trying to, we're not trying to be the solid hub that's running the show. You know, we're, all we're there is, is, to, is to be a place where all the different spokes, all the different disciplines can be mounted to run so that the whole wheel can roll. You know, that's Absolutely. essentially what, what, uh, what we're looking to be at. That's you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you, uh, Drew, you know, like uh, our presence has uh, raised some questions about, amongst uh, some, some things around the province. You know, some people are like, who, who the hell are these guys and what are they trying to do? These guys look like mixed martial artists. These They're guys out of nowhere. <laughs> oh, these guys are hoodlums. They have tattoos and all this and that. And you know what? Uh, we've never given them a reason to think that. Uh, you know, but you're going to get that type of feedback from anything that you do in any sort of industry and anything like that. And, you know, that's just a small percentage of people. And we took the time to say, hey, man, we're, we're martial artists just like you. We have people that come from Kyokushin, people that come from Taekwondo, people that come from whatever, Jiu-Jitsu, all these very traditional style things. And, uh, you know, we're just out there trying to help our people the way you've helped your people. And we're not trying to take any bread off your table. You're welcome to come to our table and, and, and chat and, and, and be happy. And we're all, we're all one here and uh, we can only be stronger. You know, if one gym or one dojo or one club or one coach gets stronger, well, the whole community just got stronger. Sometimes it's hard for the human eye to see that, but you know, anytime one thing gets stronger, the whole community gets stronger. And we're, you know, we, we've got some work to do inside of our disciplines and stuff. And that's truly what we're about. And uh, we're not here to compete with other federations. We do eventually want to put ourselves in the same table as those guys and, and get the same recognition because we deserve that. You know, we're no dis different than any other other disciplines uh but that will take time and our ultimate goal is to say hey we're cool we want to be cool with you and we want to help our people and we're here to offer any kind of help we could we were also we're big brother to our people but we're also a good neighbor to our federations you know 
Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, even when I do this show, I mean, it's not about, as mentioned, like, like, like I'm having a big guest on tomorrow. I mean, I've announced it, but I mean, uh, the focus is you guys. And they, when they told me, they said, well, it just takes that first step, but everybody wants the success right away. You can't look yes. at it like that. You really can't expect, you know what, like whether you're doing a podcast, you're starting a podcast, you're starting yeah. the AAMQ, you're going to get a lot of no's. Like, I'm going to tell you, when I had my first show, Beyond the Fight, do you know how many people laughed at me? They go, ha ha, who are you? Okay, it's a no for me. <laughs> like, I, it's like, you know that yeah. famous meme where Randy uh, Jackson from Arabic Canada was like, yeah, it's a no for me, dog. Like, I get one that I used to get people that say, yeah, I'm coming on. Then it's that meme comes up. Yeah, it's a no for me, dog. I just yeah. don't know who you are. I don't know. But yeah, they'll like, the, yeah. They'll be the first ones to say that they know you when you make it. Yeah, oh, man, I know, I know Andrew. I knew him since he started. Meanwhile, yeah, I, forget, forget about those guys. Interesting uh, fact, a uh, little fun fact. You know, it's uh, that first step is is – Tough results are slow in coming, but we're we're only a few months old. I mean, officially, as far as getting our uh, uh, NPO license and getting all that stuff and be, being legitimized in that way, we, we're, that was into that was near the end of December. And uh, you know, in that that time, and then you know, I, I think we had our first meeting late November, mid November, something like the, that, Chris. Yeah, when the board got together for the first time. So we're yep. just talking a matter of months, less than ninety days, and. Um, you know, we not only submitted the proposal and gotten the videos up, and but uh, it's been read. It's uh, you'll also notice if you uh, pay attention to the media, whether it's online or on television or on radio, that there's a lot of now. There's a lot of talk about reopening gyms. There's a lot of lot of action. <laughs> you know, so um, whether it's direct or indirect, uh, in a very short period of time, we we've, we've made some waves and we've raised some discussions. And, um, you know, we, we've lit so a fire. We, yeah, we we really, it's, it's, yeah. So it's quite incredible, you know, so it's not like, okay, we're an organization we're do, we want to do these things and nothing's happened. Um, and then just under 90 days, a tremendous amount of work has been done and a tremendous amount of effect has already been happening. So it, it's, um, uh, you know, I, uh, I won't uh, mention anything specific, but just today, if I recall, um, you know, a large, Quebec organization was saying exactly what our proposal says, you know, you know, and they have a seat already at the table uh, with the government and are influential. And um, they didn't say this last week. They didn't say this before January 18th when we submitted our proposal to the government. They didn't say this last year when uh, in the first shutdown, they said this now after we had sent our proposal in and they, they, they went, they went after they, their points on their, on their topic were exactly from our which, which, which we don't have a, which we don't, yeah, I agree with you, Chris, which we don't have a problem with because no, we, not at we, all. we have the same goal. We, 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 we yeah, now absolutely. lit, we now lit a fire that woke up a lot of people and got a lot of attention. Nobody was talking about dojos. Nobody was talking about martial arts clubs, schools. Nobody. It did not exist. AMQ comes up, boom, puts on fire, lights the whole town now, yeah. up. And and, yeah. and, 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 you know, in relation to that, it woke up a lot of people in our industry. And yeah. what we're seeing now is our formula that was very original to AMQ being, um, being used for the same goal, which is awesome. This is what we want. Yeah, so the precisely. More people, the more firefighters you have, you know, spraying, spraying water on that fire, the better, you know, the more chances you have of, uh, of putting that thing out. And, and this is fantastic. This is fantastic. I mean, we're yeah, thrilled, we're just, thrilled by that. Thrilled by some that. Of the, some of the things that we heard you know, to the effect of, you know, um, paraphrase, you know, well, who's going to listen to you? Nobody knows who you are. So case in point, you're absolutely right. But those that uh, currently have a seat at the table, they heard us and they passed our message along. <laughs> Which is, and we, yeah. we, 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 we thank that you for that. that that's yeah, fantastic. Absolutely. That accelerates what we want to do. So, so that, that's great, you know, and, and, and um, you know, we're looking forward to see what comes out of all this. You know, the AMQ has a, a big agenda. It has a lot of goals and uh, we're, we're excited to move forward. You know, as tired as we are, 
me, Chris, Sam, Dave, and, and Francis from, uh, from Coach Barbu, we're exhausted. We've been working 24-7 for so long on this. We worked straight through the holidays, straight through the weekends, and there's, there's never an off switch. Our off switch was disconnected, torn off, ripped away, thrown over the side of Highway 40, and never, we never looked back at it. You know, we have an on switch, and, and, and our dial is on 11 all the time, and we're, we're, we're exhausted, but we're very optimistic. We're still very focused. We're still very productive, and every day, uh, things are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, when we started this thing, we couldn't put a group of people together to take this project on. Like nobody wanted nothing to do with it because you were taking on the weight of the world. Let's try to fix Quebec's martial arts scene. My God, it's easier to resurrect the Titanic off the bottom of the ocean and, and put that thing together and help get that thing floating. Right. I mean, so, so we, 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 we took on something huge and we can, you know, we, we had a tough time getting, you know, five serious members, which we did. And, and as we started to, to, to move along and, and, and the snowball effect began and everything started really moving, what we noticed was uh, these sort of measuring tools for success that were sort of popping up randomly and people were coming to us and offering their services and some high profile names and, and just volunteers to the point where, you know, I've had, uh, I, I'm not going to mention any names or anything because it's very early, but uh, I've had the biggest international known federations uh, for different disciplines approach me and, and, and we're on fire. Okay. There's some things you just can't talk about, but we're on fire. And this is a long cry from where we started 90 days ago, where we, couldn't get a volunteer to come in and help get this thing started. So, uh, you know, I, 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 it's not bragging. It's just stating the facts and how it all actually turned out and how what it is. It, people want it. Well, that's, I was just about to say yeah. that it just, it just sort of reinforces how badly needed it was. It was so badly needed. And, uh, it, and not only for our people and our students and our martial artists and our gym owners and our dojo owners, but on a much bigger level that I think you're probably, I'm going to be able to talk about maybe, maybe another time when I come back on your show, you know, but it's a little bit early right now, but there's, there's, there's truly like, sometimes I sit here, I'm like, Holy fuck, what's going on here? This is, this is out of control, but in a very positive way. And, and it's just taken on such a life that it's, it's, I don't know, it's mind boggling, but yeah. you know what? It's, it's beautiful. And, and I, I, I don't know how this is going to end up, but it's going to be very positive and, it's going to be something to be very proud of. And uh, that that's regardless, you know, it's going to be, it's going to impact everybody. And uh, it's interesting. Like I said, I don't know how far it's going to go, but it's going to, it's going to be interesting to see everything turn out. Yeah. For me, like, it's the same thing. Like, I mean, it's not to the success of you guys. Like when I restarted this podcast, I had to, I, I was my old one. There's a lot of things that went wrong with it that had to improve. So I went to the drawing board and I realized I don't need to have like a $3,000 laptop. I don't need to have like the best video opener. I just need to do it. I just need to do it. And then it's going to come like, so to kick off 2021, um, my first guest was you was M was a uh, six ranked middleweight in the world. Jack Hermanson. It's on YouTube. I, I interviewed uh, Jack Hermanson, the Joker Hermanson. And then after that, uh, yeah, that was like my big break. And then, you know, now to, like, and then I recently had uh Jean Yves brother on my show Vic. too, which was like, yeah, Vic. Yeah. It was He's like, I didn't guy. expect that. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I did not expect that. And you know, and then tomorrow I have uh, like, an were, were, were you able to talk with Vic? Did you, did, did, did you, did you able to, were you able to get a word in? Yeah, I was. Yeah, he's a good guy. He likes to talk. I love yeah. talking to Vic. Yeah. Yeah, I love I just what I love about Quebec martial arts and you know, like everyone's together and uh but as I said, I don't want to say I don't want to like put my accolades on your guy's success cuz this show's about you, but I can relate to it cuz when I got her Manson on, a guy like her um Vic and then and then tomorrow you know what? Fuck it. I'll just say it. I have Gegard Mousasi and Alexander Gustafson's manager coming on tomorrow, so that's like a really good like deal, man. And no one expected that. Like, and it's like, I don't, 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 don't care about what people expect yeah. of you. You, you, you expect you, whatever you want to expect of yourself and you make that happen. Yeah. And when you guys approach me too, I just want to say like, Justin, when you approach me, Hey, I saw you have a podcast. you like, I never, as I said, I had zero expectation. You know, I used to kind of be like, well, one day I'm going to, but you know what I do? <laughs> I just, you know, Vincent and my coach Mo, shout out to my coach, Mohammed Chick. Uh, they said it best put the blinders on, do the work, and then people will start paying attention. And then the ones that want to like help you grow and succeed, pay attention to those ones. And 
kind of said it right. And I, I'm super happy I got to meet you guys tonight and, you know, get to know you. And I really feel just from this, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just honored that I could give the platform. Okay. Um, I can, if I can do anything, please let me know. I mean, yeah. I like AMQ. I will support it all the way. Um, if you have anyone else on the board that wants to, to come on, that's like a, that's like, like a, whether they're like a big, like a, like a high consultant or another like chairman, like with you guys, please, you know, I want to give them that voice. Like, I really want to show why Quebec is the fight capital of North America, yeah. other than California and uh, Vegas. But uh, well, we could, we, we could equal them and we could actually surpass them if we do it right, you know. So we have far more, uh, we have a far deeper co co um, combat culture here than, than some of these places and, uh, and the population of amateur and pro fighters are pretty big too and mm -hmm. and the history and everything's there so it's, it wouldn't be surprising to be as big or maybe even bigger one day down the road but uh potential's there and we hope to bring that out okay awesome well so where can we guys so where can people connect with you if um if uh they want to uh like you know get a part become part of this donate support any way possible because there's some the momentum's coming man it's like wildfire like there's a wildfire yeah. coming <laughs> Well, you know, I, 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 I hope so. And I feel that too. Um, so you can go to our website, which is www.artsmartialqc.ca. And you can also find that uh, we also have the English domain of uh, Quebec martial arts, uh, .ca. Uh, You can go there, our website, Francis did the website, beautiful job on the website. And you can find, you can read our, our 60 page uh, proposal in English and French. Everything on that site is in English and French. All the media that we've done, uh, you can sign up as a individual and uh, martial artist, and you can also sign up as a dojo and a club. And you can also make donations, you know, anybody wants to make donations, please go ahead. You know, we have lawyers to pay, uh, PR agencies to pay, uh, all these things, these services that we use uh, regularly, uh, you know, we, we paid out of our pocket pretty much for, for many things. Uh, and, and, you know, anytime you want to make a small contribution, that's always very well received. Uh, so yeah, check out the website. We're also on Instagram. We're also on Twitter. We're also on Facebook. Uh, so yeah, so, so check us out there. Uh, it's, it's AAMQ on Instagram, everywhere else. It's, uh, it's, it's the, uh, Association of, of, of uh, Martial Arts Quebec. Uh, and that's, that's where you're going to find us. Another thing too, regarding the, the donation work, completely transparent association. Yeah. So you can actually go on our website and see who's donated, you know, um, whether they're anonymous or they give their name and also you see where all the money's going. Yeah. So we're completely transparent with yeah. uh, our financials because we just yeah. we want people to, yeah. to understand that that every penny is for them, uh, for from them is for them, and for what we're doing. And uh, as Justin said, you know, and a, and a good portion of that um, is also out of our own pockets as well. Yeah, we, we it, spend a lot of money. It's unfortunately not a free process, you know, what we're doing. Awesome. Yeah. So. So find us on our website, guys. So Andrew, I know you do a lot of talking and, 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 you, and you ask a lot of questions, but uh, I want to ask you a question. I want to I want to I want to turn the mic back on you. Who's your favorite fighter? Who's your favorite fighter? And you can name a few favorite fighters from different disciplines. And let let me know if you have ever met one of your dream fighters. One of okay. your okay. Um, favorite fighter in boxing, I would have to say Marvin Hagler. Be even uh, over yes. <laughs> You know, he's in Italy now, eh? He's, yeah. he's, a, he's a commentator all in time, Italy, yeah. My all-time favorite fighter right there. Mar Mar Marvelous and, Marvin, and yeah. Okay, keep going. Let me hear the rest. K1, I would say Andy Hug, but um, I'm going to have to honestly say, you know, he passed away before I got into it. So I'd have to say uh, Sam Slam and Sam Greco, because Australia is kind of like Canada's Commonwealth cousin that drinks. They're like that uncle that drinks beer. <laughs> so yeah. Slam and Sam. Yeah, that's a great one. That's a great one, yeah. Uh, wrestling. I don't follow pro wrestling, so no comment. Uh, glory kickboxing. I would have to say, Bod or Hari. I like the anti hero. I like mm -hmm. a bad. I don't like, I don't like I, the good I trained guys. in, uh, I trained in, uh, in, in, in Holland with, uh, Bod or Hari's coach. God. Yeah. At Mike's, Mike Passanier. Yeah. <laughs> Big phenomenal, Mike. phenomenal coach. Big Mike. You and... know, just, just not, not to steal your, your moment away, but, uh, one of the first things I noticed at Mike's gym, the ring was here. Next to the ring was a little fountain, so you can get out of the ring and grab a quick drink of water. Right next to the, the fountain was a small sink, so you were either getting out of the ring to wash the blood off your face or to get a drink of water, and those two, those two things were next to each other, right next to the ring. Iconic. Um, 
glory. Yeah, so that's glory. In MMA, I have a few. But if I really had to to pick one, Who, who's your is, modern who's your modern day hero MMA? Who's your vintage hero MMA? Modern day John Jones. Now I understand it's a controversial choice, but I mm. battled I battled my demons too. I and like John I opened like up. Uh, I like John Jones. I just think watching him is like watching LeBron James, and uh, like you like MMA needs its Kobe Bryant, you know MJ. That's John Jones the way he thinks. Um, the the best fight IQ in the game, yeah. John Jones, if you yeah. ask me. You know, if, if he hadn't uh, got into some of the trouble and done some of the things he did, he might have been the greatest of all time. Now, GSP has to be the greatest of all time. If you look at everybody he's fought, he's never been in a scandal. He's never got caught doping, never. blah, 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 blah. And the amount of people he fought, the 22 or something fights he had with top contenders, we've never seen anybody go through a list like that. So GSP has to be number one. That, that, to me, that's a no-brainer. Mm -hmm. Uh, if not for John Jones and some of the things he's gotten into, he might have even had passed. He might have had the opportunity to to to, to pass GSP there. That's yeah. just my opinion. But okay, okay, go ahead. Who's your Who's your vintage? You know what? It's it's tough because I I would like to say uh, sometimes I say Ken Shamrock for what he's accomplished as the world's toughest man and what he does for in, like at risk youth. But I'd have to go with Chuck Liddell because when Zufa was struggling. And not many people know this. Like the UFC almost didn't exist because of, and until UFC 40 came, it wasn't tough season one. UFC 40, uh, Ortiz versus Shamrock won. That was the the most important. And then Chuck Liddell basically propelled the sport when he became a coach and won the belt. So yeah, vintage. Good answers, man. Yeah. So I take it you probably don't get asked a lot of these questions sometimes, right? So I thought it'd be no. fun to turn it around on you, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But honestly, guys, it was such a pleasure to, to host you guys. Um, okay, let's do this again without having to do three parts separately because fucking technology. But uh, <laughs> I hope you guys had a blast. Uh, the show will it be on you. The, it will be on YouTube, Spotify, uh, iTunes. I sound like a radio disc jockey and all other audio platforms. So that's the Drew Spirience. 80% combat sports, 20% everything else. Good stuff. Man. Thanks, man. Thanks for having us. Huh? Thank you. Thank you.